scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. He says to see thy power and thy glory reproduced in my life the same way I saw it in the sanctuary. It's not enough to see power in the church and on crusade grounds. Lord, I want that spiritual reality to be at work in my life. Years ago, when I sensed the call of God upon my life, please listen. I began to study books and study men and women. I studied large churches and ministries. And I found out as I studied that there were so many people who were powerless and could not do much. And when God began to describe to me the kind of ministry and the dimensions that he would want me to walk in, I knew that I would have to spend time with God until I touched something genuine. Otherwise, I would have to join the band of people misleading and deceiving themselves and other people speaking with no results and then i began a journey exploring spiritual power i began to study the lives of men and women who had been used mightily unfortunately i did not find many of them that were models enough i began to study the generals i began to study the apostles elijah hallelujah and in the course of my journey for me it was a matter of life and death it was not just for my name i knew that i would confront sick people i knew that i would confront oppressed people i knew that it would take power for any kind of increase in ministry spiritually numerically and otherwise i knew posters would only do so much I knew English would only do so much. And I made up my mind that I have no message for God's people until I have the power to prove it. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing. This is an exhortation. I want to stir up your heart. I watch in sincere grief as I see a lot of men of God and people who want to be used by God with so much zeal, so much English, but no power and then a few who have touched what they believe to be power convince themselves that because they touched someone and he fell down power why do you need spiritual power I'll tell you Pastor Alpha and Manasseh shared it very powerfully there are giants on every mountain please pay attention this city has gates that you are here is a sign of dominion it's not a sign of the absence of darkness it's a sign of the prevailing power of God over them there are many lives here that have been buffeted by darkness I talk to people all the time and I minister I minister all the time and I watch with shock the way Satan prevails cheaply over the lives of people there are doors that will never open until power opens them. When Moses went to Pharaoh, there was very little conversation. 
when the conversations were done, it was an encounter of power. Are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? And then I began to pray. I remember when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he never spoke a word to me, but he transferred power. Never spoke one word, but something left him and entered my spirit. He said, the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. I remember when I began to see the miracles and the hand of God. Then I began to see other issues that I could not contend with in the lives of people. And I knew that I had to go back. And that was when I learned that you must consistently contend for spiritual power. Let me tell you something. There is too much noise in the church because there is little power. You will always have to explain and explain and explain. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. He says, but I came to you in the demonstration of the spirit power. That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Tonight I want to guide us through a few secrets my personal spiritual journey I promise you that if you pay attention to this little exhortation you will encounter power Jacob was a man who met with the Lord and he held on to him he said I will not let you go it was an encounter with power he said leave me for the day break it he said no way I said what is your name he said my name is Jacob a cheat and a supplanter and it says, from now henceforth, your name is changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God. You have contended with God and prevailed. A time must come in a man's life when you'll be tired of the level you are. And cry in desperation. Lord, I need your power and your glory in my life. There are gates. Many of us come from all kinds of regions. Hear me. Your personal salvation does not deliver your territory. The gates are still there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are giants on every mountain. The Bible says, How terrible art thou in your works? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I remember Bishop Oyedeko sharing one time. And he said how that the church was not growing. They were fasting. They were praying and doing all they knew to do. And it was not growing. And then one time while they gathered with the brethren and they were angry at the situation. He said the Lord asked him to come out. And when he stepped out, he saw a dark cloud. And he said, this is the cloud that makes people to misunderstand your ministry. And he commanded the cloud to roll away. And there was an explosion. Let me tell you something. Time does not change anything. It is power that brings change. Time only reveals. It does not change. For 38 years, the man was sitting at Bethesda. But when the power of God came upon his life, It is power that can give you audacity to be able to bring heaven to bear. To be able to bring the realities of the realm of the spirit here and now. It takes power to change an SS genotype to an AA. It takes power to open the door of marriage for a lady that it has been closed. It takes power for a woman without womb to get pregnant. It takes power for someone whose life has been tied forever through the greatness of thy power I made up my mind that I have no ministry if I cannot demonstrate its validity three keys very quickly and then we are going to pray the first secret the Lord taught me 
before we talk on the keys, let me just give us a little preamble. 1 John chapter 5 verse 9, help us media. 1 John 5 verse 19. Very simple but interesting revelation that God gives us there. 1 John 5 verse 19. Can we read it together? It's projected. One, two, read. Can you read it louder? One, two, read. Although we are of God, I'm giving you an information that the whole cosmos, the social system, lie it in wickedness. Please believe this. That the whole world lies in wickedness. You don't need to offend anybody. The condition to be a victim or a potential victim of the curse that comes upon creation is that you are born of a woman. For as long as you arrive here safely from birth until you transit, there is a potential for disaster. It takes power. It says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Rule thou. Pastors, hear me. If your ministry must move from where it is, you can have all the connection in the world. It takes spiritual power. Hallelujah. It takes power for anything to happen in this life. The first key to spiritual power is consecration. Write it down. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing. If you want to see the power and the anointing of the spirit upon your life, the first key is not praying in tongues. The first key is a life of consecration. What does it mean to be consecrated? It means to be yielded. It means to be aligned. It means to be separated unto God. Consecration is a reflection of your submission. A dedication that you have given your whole self, spirit, soul and body. You have laid down your will. I see so many people who want power, but they still own their wills. Let me tell you something. If it is true spiritual power you want to see in your life, your will must die. Your personal will, your ambition, you must be willing to lay it aside if you want power with God. You cannot take the power of God and fulfill your own agenda. You must die to your agenda. Are you getting blessed? Spiritual power is not a gift. Make no mistakes about it. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Consecration. The price of yieldedness. The centurion, when Jesus came, he made a statement. He said, for I am a man under authority. And on the strength of my submission to an authority, I can tell one go and he will go. I can tell one come and Jesus looked at him. A Roman citizen with such an understanding of the kingdom. Forget about spiritual power when your will is still alive. You want to run your life by your own terms, by your own way. So many pastors are doing their ministry they are church. So many businessmen are doing their business until it becomes God's own. Forget about power. Dedication. Consecration. I'll never forget one time when I was praying. It was, it, it's not a doctrine, it's my personal cause. I had to, I was praying and I had to stand before God. Lay down, I stood naked from head to toe. And I say, Lord, I'm dedicated by this prophetic act. My spirit, my soul, and my body. Let this mortal body become a superconductor of your anointing. I give it to you. I have no ambition of my own. 
my entire life is around the circumference of his will. You want to see the power of God upon your life. You must come to a point where you die to your will. Do not think God will give you power to do your thing. No. It will have to be at his terms. That's what was happening to Jacob. He touched his tie and made him everly dependent on an authority other than himself. There are so many people who are not consecrated to God. It takes dedication. It takes total surrender. That's the word. Surrender. Surrender. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. You gave your everything. I give my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. This is the key. This is what I did with my life. Lord, take everything. Take my ambition. Take my destiny. Take everything that means life to me. I surrender it to you. And God says, if you can give me everything. He says, for because you did not withhold your son. That was the key. Consecration is not just about religious rituals. It's about a state of surrender. A state where you know that he becomes your life. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the body, the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son. Are you willing to give up everything? The problem is many of us are not willing to give up everything because we have been able to educate ourselves falsely that every time you surrender all to God, he makes you a failure. Every time you give up to God, he, he, will, he will destroy your life. But he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. If it is your business, get set to die. If it is your marriage, get set for the pressure to kill you. If they are your children, get set to kill yourself raising them. But when it becomes his own. This song that we sing, they all belong to you. Even the air that we breathe. It all belongs to you, belongs to you, belongs to you. That's the anthem of my life. There's nothing in my life that belongs to Joshua Selma. It belongs to you. Listen, I have transferred every responsibility to him. I will play my part. But it belongs to him. My life is not my own. I have no ambition of myself. My breath belongs to him. My strength belongs to him. This is the first secret of spiritual power. Consecration. That life of surrender. Believe me. So many men of God run around with dots of oil. Looking for anybody that is anointed. And they kneel down with their carnality and flesh. You can soak yourself inside one jerry can of anointed oil. You will only get up littered with oil. But you will not touch power with God. You want power with God. The first secret is surrender. I'm not talking of born again. 
I'm talking of him taking everything. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was speaking to the church, but he was still crying for intimacy. Number two, the second secret of spiritual power is revelation and insight. Revelation and insight. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Let's look at verse 18. Paul the apostle prayed a prayer to the church in Ephesus. And he made an interesting statement. Help us please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. He says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, flooded with light. Then he says that ye may know. When the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light, you know. You come into oneness with a reality. It doesn't just mean to be aware. It's not talking of awareness. It's talking of a state of oneness where you and that reality have become one. He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or imagine but all of that is limited to the power that works within us. Light and illumination. When light breaks open over your spirit, please hear me. When illumination breaks open, authority is given to you in the spirit. One time I was in a vision. I've shared it here a number of times. And while I was in a vision, I saw a big door, giant gate, and when I looked closely, it was zoomed to me, and I looked at it closely, and I found out that that big door was made of smaller doors, and on every door, there was a scriptural inscription on it. I saw the doors opening and closing, and every time they opened light, like an arrow would just shoot out of it, and then the Lord began to reveal to me, that this is what happens when people catch a revelation of a dimension of truth. The light, the power, the anointing to demonstrate its validity is released upon them. Meaning when you teach a thing you cannot demonstrate, you have not caught the light yet. No matter how you pretend it. Illumination. Illumination. This is part of the benefit of prayer. That when you pray, capacity is given to you in the spirit. It's like a, a, an elevation in the spirit that tilts you in a position where you are able to see clearer. And on the strength of that illumination, you will walk. Hallelujah. There are so many people groping around. Dominion, I've said it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. You don't receive an impartation called dominion. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the laws and the mysteries of the kingdom. The scripture Pastor Alpha shared in Job 38, he was trying to quote it. Verse 33, he says, Knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Do you know the laws that govern the realm of the spirit? And can you establish their dominion? There is something that if you know right now, the door that has been closed over you will open. There is an access to light. There is something when a pastor knows, increase becomes unlimited. There is something when a man of God knows, his life becomes a mystery. Every man, functions according to the measure of light that is accessible to him the bible says you will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light has come not when you are tired of sitting arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you 
Let me tell you a little secret. Especially if you are in, in ministry. There is a level of spiritual illumination that begins to rise from your life and your ministry. It starts attracting a kind of people. First, it will attract Gentiles. Kings will not come yet. Kings don't come to your life. They come to the brightness. So there is a degree of illumination you have that will begin to bring certain people. But as the light keeps getting brighter, it will begin to compel certain kinds of people. Light. Illumination. I'm not just talking of Bible study. I'm talking about access to the mysteries of the kingdom. It says, call on to me. And that's why we are praying tonight. Because we need access to light. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. It says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are things we do not know. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants. Not everything is accessible to everyone. When Saul and his men watch this. Uh, was it Saul or David now? I can't get the story quite clearly. But when they were returning back, they were tired and hungry. And they went to the priest and asked. They said, we want bread. Here's what the priest said. They said he said, there is no ordinary bread. The common bread is finished. But there is a hallowed bread. There are deeper things in the spirit. Weightier dimensions of illumination that can turn a man to become like a spirit. But it happens when you call upon him. He says, call unto me. When the king wanted to destroy Daniel and all his friends, he said, let the king not be hasty in this. I will bring the king a right answer. He went back and called upon him and his eyes were open. He says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The next dimension of our life and destinies are at the mercy of spiritual secrets and mysteries. This ministry, by the grace of God, is revolving around mysteries. Spiritual mysteries. A mystery is a hidden code of operation. It's a spiritual code of operation that only takes the agency of the Holy Ghost for you to understand its operation. And it says it has been given unto you to know. There is a mystery that will command dominion in your family. That all those powers of darkness that attempt to tie people's destinies down. Illumination. Number three. The third key to walking in spiritual power is being and remaining full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. There are different measures and dimensions of the Holy Spirit that can find expression in people. But if you want spiritual power in your life, let me tell you, there is no laziness. You must be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. It was, it was Stephen. While he was about to be stoned, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost and power to a point that his face was like that of an angel. In Bible time, the condition to be a worker in the welfare department is that you are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. That was a requirement. To serve tables, you must be full of the Holy Ghost. There are so many believers who are not full of the Holy Ghost. That's why we carry our emptiness and we keep embarrassing ourselves. And there is one spiritual key to being full of the Holy Ghost. Prayer prayer the ministry of prayer with fasting 
the key. Spiritual key. That's why we must pray. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, there is an energy that is generated within you. Every yoke, is, the Bible gives us a picture. It's like an expansion that is happening. There is a level that expansion gets. It breaks every chain at once. At once. Full of the Holy Ghost. That's the level that we must contend. That you pray to a point where you become full of the Spirit. And certain things will happen to you the moment you are full of the Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein in excess it says but be ye filled with the holy ghost if you are truly filled naturally certain things will start you will start speaking not by your mental ascent you are speaking as a response because when when you are full of anything whatever spirit or agency fills you up begins to live out its nature through you manifesting its characteristics through you that's how people become superhuman they are full of the holy ghost to a point that they become puppets their voice is the voice of the spirit their hands have become the hands of the holy ghost so when they tell you god bless you they speak on the strength of the agency the only way to communicate being full of the holy spirit is being drunk when a man drinks to stupor there is a level to which he drinks and that that alcohol influences his mind and his faculty and momentarily he loses consciousness at that point he will say things and do things that are a direct influence of that alcohol when you become full of the holy spirit then the spirit of prophecy will fall on you and you will begin to speak and call things that be not let me tell you something. The correct order of dominion prayers is to pray in tongues until you are full before you begin to prophesy. You don't just stand up and start saying, in Jesus' name, gates open. No. There is a dimension you stretch in the spirit. It's like an escape velocity. When you get there, the spirit of prophecy comes upon you. And you begin to make decrees. And I trust God that we'll get to that dimension tonight. That is the level where you can call things that be not as though they were. That is the level where the anointing will shatter every yoke when you are full of the Holy Spirit. But when that power is at work in your life, it begins to activate possibilities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. It takes power for the gate of your destiny to be opened. Every one of us here is on our way to destiny. But it takes power. Otherwise, the gates will not open. Tonight, hear me. You are going to stand and pray until the chains that lock up the gate of your destiny give way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm preparing our hearts because we are going to pray. The devil must give up on you. You must pray until that spirit of barrenness jumps out of your life. You must pray until the chains that are tying down your life go. You must pray. There is a way you can pray yourself to victory. It's like a flight in the spirit. You keep praying. When the flesh is tired, you say, no way. When you keep ascending, you will get to a point in the spirit where you would have touched reality. Brothers and sisters, you will never come back again. It's an escape velocity in the spirit. And then you wake up and all of a sudden you see doors opening. Don't wait until a word of knowledge is given or a prophecy. Tonight we are praying ourselves to destiny. We are kings and priests. We will take on the priestly role first. We will stretch in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any man afflicted? let him pray not let him discuss not let him complain is any man challenged by gates are there doors that have refused to open let him pray is any man jobless and you've done your applications and doors are not open 
pray your way to victory. Terminal diseases is because they have an occasion to lead to your flesh. When you generate power in the spirit, when you generate fire in the spirit, it burns every chaff. Does any man desire to see signs and wonders and miracles in your ministry and in your life? You pray. 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 Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. Let me repeat it. Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. You can pray your way to victory in the spirit. You can pray your way to favor and breakthrough. You can pray your way and smash those doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. It takes prayer. When the apostles were caught and James was beheaded, it pleased Herod the people were happy and they bound Peter. They were about to kill Peter and the church said, no way. And they began to pray. Prayer authorizes heaven to step in in your affairs. When you pray, you authorize heaven. When you pray, you activate the ministry of angels. When you pray, you begin the work of creation. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Those who can access the power and the light. Tonight I want you to be angry with the things that have been happening in your life. Some of us are like a battery. We have gone down spiritually. You must pray yourself to fullness. There are so many men of God who do not pray. And they stand and do all kinds of gymnastics. Let me tell you something. Nothing in your life will cover for the absence of prayer. When a man is not a prayer man, it shows there is, there is a touch of eternity upon you when you are a man of prayer. For Elijah was a man of like passion and he used prayer to lock the gates over a city. He did not use a discussion with Ahab. Prayer, he locked the gate and kept the keys in his pocket. He said that gate will not be opened except at my word tonight you can pray yourself to victory inside and outside and all around there are families that have come tonight people have traveled from far and near it's time to pray yourself to victory pray yourself to victory until you are full of the holy ghost the key of consecration the key of illumination the key of prayer being full of the Holy Ghost. You become a bank of spiritual power. Hear me. Let me say this especially. This seems to work only for men of God. It may not be applicable for other people. But let me give pastors a secret. The day power comes to your life, poverty has died forever. I guarantee you. I, the day power comes upon your life, genuine spiritual power not nonsense that people are doing around the day power comes you have gotten something that is worth it i was teaching the school of ministry students and i told them that if not for anything when you find the anointing you have found what is more than gold we trivialize the anointing hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference Oh God, you are my God. Early, like we are doing, will I seek you. My soul thirst for you. I want to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, do you have this in the trim audio? They don't have it. There will be different sessions and I'm going to be leading the sessions. Hallelujah. 
We are going to be praying in tongues for one hour at a stretch non-stop. After that, when the spirit of prophecy is upon you, there is an anointing who anoints us and all of that and then we can minister to people but we need to pray. Do you have it? Are you ready with it? Okay, so quickly. Everyone is going to participate. We are going to pray. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. Everyone say it takes prayer to command victories. Say it takes prayer. That's what a vigil is. A vigil is not a time to sip tea and take lemon juice and, and banana cake. You are joking. A vigil is a time to tell the devil, Christ has won this. I come to establish my victory. Listen, the breakthroughs that will arise from this prayer session will surprise many of you. You never know how cheap Satan is until you are a man of prayer. You never know how cheap doors can be. How cheap they can open. Pray. Pray. When you pray in the secret, then you make your life easy in the open. But when you do not pray, many of us pray, but we pray amiss. Tonight I want to teach you strategies, deep strategies for spiritual prayer that will produce results. That you are talking does not mean you are praying. There are many people who are talking for a long time and they leave that place with the same misery and frustration. There, there are dimensions and laws and there are rules of engagement. I don't know about you, but part of my request, I told God, I must step into new levels of grace in this vigil. Shortly before I came here, I lay down flat before the Lord and I said, Lord, my personal desire, I know you will use me to touch and bless your people. But whilst that is happening, I hold on to your garment. There is a new level. I saw in a vision a curtain open and there was another one and I was pushed forward. I said, that's it. I must pray till what I have seen. Many of you have seen things in your dream. Prayer is the weapon that you use to bring it to pass. You have seen a great life. You have seen a prosperous destiny. But there are gates. Make no mistakes about it. Your business will not just excel. There are gates. Sister, the marriage will not just happen. There are gates. But tonight, ministries and destinies will rise to a new level. Please, I'm saying this so that you will prepare your spirit your spirit. Rise up everybody. Inside and outside, please rise up. The first prayer point is a cry for grace. Call it the spirit of prayer and supplication. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, release upon me the spirit of prayer and supplication. Just pray. Please, everybody, rise. Rise, rise, rise. Stand on your feet. You came to pray. Do this for the sake of your destiny. Will you open up the gate? up the doors will you open up the gate open up the doors open up the gate Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O oh God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken 
us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Quicken us, O God, and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and pray in one minute before we start praying properly. Say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Lift your voice and pray. Take everything inside and outside right to the back. Lord, I've tried to live my life my own way. I surrender everything. I surrender my will my ambition I surrender everything it belongs to you pray total surrender Lord, it belongs to you. The bread is yours. The gift is yours. The business is yours. The ministry is yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Media, are you ready? Please let me know when you are ready. You are ready? Now, hallelujah. Dr. Cindy Trim is a woman of prayer. Cindy Trim is a woman with a strong prophetic grace for prayer. And we are going to be using her one hour prophetic declaration. She makes prophetic declarations. It's an audio while that is happening until it finishes is a guide the moment it starts we are stretching in the spirit no sleeping anyone who is sleeping hold his hands and walk around with them no sleeping praise the lord because this is about your destiny outside make sure you participate whatever you do be ready to stretch it in the spirit and i want you to imagine yourself ascending a ladder in the spirit where you are tearing down the walls of limitation. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hands over your people and I ask for a supply of grace to pray. Grace to pray. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon you. Let the capacity, the capacity to stretch in the spirit. It cannot be by your efforts. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Praise the Lord. Lift your voice, everybody begin to pray in the spirit. Pray like a priest. Only in the spirit. Only in the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues. For as a prince. As a prince. This is not just your normal prayer life. I know, I know normally you pray. You are under a heavy unction. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. your Bibles please Psalm 92 
Psalm 92. We're entering another phase. Verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I want us to read it together. One to read. One more time. Horn is a symbol of authority. Horn is a symbol of power. The anointing was usually put in a ram's horn. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Just like the horn of a unicorn is always above. You will exalt my he says and i shall be anointed with fresh oil listen the lord asked me to do this before we begin to minister to the sick and all of that this is ordinary oil but there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon this and this loses its earthly significance and takes on a heavenly significance this is an anointing that is coming upon you to bring freshness to your life this is an anointing that is coming upon your life to bring remarkable breakthroughs i saw this when i was praying in a vision and that's why i'm just doing this we're going to be very fast because there are still many other things to do I'm going to pray on this and we'll put it in this plate and the ministers will help will just spread it around when they pass it to you just tap your hand and put it on your forehead and begin to blast in tongues when everyone is done then we we'll begin with the ministrations father in the name of Jesus Christ can you open them for this is ordinary oil but by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare that beginning from tonight they carry the anointing of the Spirit many of you as you partake of this fresh fire comes upon your life freshness listen Tonight is a night of encounter with power. Hallelujah. It's a night of encounter with power. Father, I lay my hands upon this. In a name that is above all names. May they become conduits of your power. May they become instruments of power. As this comes upon the heads of many. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that they will bring supernatural breakthroughs, supernatural freshness, supernatural grace by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice and begin to pray and say Lord as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you praying as this oil comes upon me something must break loose in my destiny are you still praying Lord, I'm tired of stagnation. I'm tired of hardship. Keep praying. Lord, my heart is open. New dimension. 
new dimension of fire new dimension of illumination new dimension of victory new dimension of grace don't don't start applying it yet What tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than me it's Gotta be more than me Hallelujah. Now listen, please, I want you to know that this is not an ordinary oil. It has the power of God. What you do is just pass it to the first person. You just touch it and then begin to make declarations and prophecies. We'll do that very quickly so that we'll finish up because there are, there are still some other sessions and our time is already gone. Hallelujah. It's got to be more, got to be more. Father, let there be all kinds of miracles and breakthroughs as your people encounter this oil in the name of Jesus Christ go ahead just tap it lay it on your head and begin to blast in tongues go ahead everybody you can put it on your hands if you want to but go ahead quickly quickly just pass it round, pass it round quickly. Make sure there's enough outside, please. Let everybody get it. Everybody. Go ahead and pray. Make decrees. Make decrees. Believe what you are doing. Make decrees. Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Those outside, are they, do they have the oil? Please let's save time very quickly outside. Make sure your speaking, my life will never be the same. Please rise up everybody. Let's pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to visit you and speak to your situation. Go ahead, please pray. here kneeling with a child hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family that came here a family that came here I think this this has to do with sickness this is a family is it that you brought somebody or I'm seeing sickness and infirmity Please quickly, let's save time. We have, we still have a lot. Hallelujah. Stand up, sir. Where is your wife? Because I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft and I'm seeing oppression in your life. I don't know you, I don't know now. 
Mommy, where is the woman with a prayer house? That mommy, please make your way to the front. The Lord is saying I should minister to you fresh grace. Quickly, quickly, please, where is that person? this young boy what is this that I'm seeing I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing snakes all over him this is what I'm seeing it came from you to him please collect this child let me minister to this woman please don't bring anybody out until I tell you to bring them out why are they here Memuna is that your name help us with a mic please huh This little girl, how can such a little girl be so oppressed? You're sleeping, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this oppression leave this lady now. Mommy, I'm going to pray for you. You are stepping into a new level of the prophetic. Your eyes will be opened in a strange way, in a very, very strange way. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing close to you and pouring like oil. This is what I see happening to you. Like oil being poured upon you. And the Lord says, I should tell you, you are stepping into another dimension. A strange dimension of grace. Lord, make this happen by your grace. A strange order and a strange dimension of grace. Madam, where are you from? Madam, where are you from? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing serious oppression. An attack is not just on your baby. This thing, you are the one who really needs to be free, not even the baby. You get the point. But you have to calm down now, madam. Let me talk to you. I'm seeing you in the spirit. There's no mic. Okay, that's all right. I'm looking at this madam in the spirit, and I'm seeing you fatter than this. I'm seeing what happened. You were sick. Even now. I don't even know that I'll come out. This is what I'm telling you because I'm looking at you in the spirit and the weight I'm seeing is not the same with what I'm seeing right now. That's why I told you it's not the issue of your child. What is happening is simply translating from you to the child. Come, sir. You and your lovely wife. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Do you believe, madam? You believe that? Where do you walk? Are you walking? Where? Sterling Bank. It won't be too long. God is going to take you from that place. You know this now. You have been preparing to what? Yes. No, not true. Uh, because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a referee like a you know when it's almost time in a football match this is what i'm seeing your time there is almost up and god is going to lift you i prophesy it in the name of jesus christ and i'm declaring that let this happen in the name of jesus christ there is need to pray for your child um, i'm looking at this child and i'm seeing something like symptoms of fever temperature we have to pray for him father in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit everything that is not of god upon this child i take authority over it in jesus name madam the lord says i should tell you that he's bringing you into a season of favor please i want you to believe me i don't just talk if god has not told me anything do you believe father bring this family into tremendous realms of favor in the name of jesus christ why am i seeing memuna on your head are you memuna that's your name come you too you are memuna. i'm seeing a name written on her head and i'm seeing memuna is that your name or is the name of someone? I'm 
and I will restore. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He can restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Huh? Two things. Number one, your relationship with God. Huh? You can't be one leg in and one leg out. You get what I'm saying, right? Leave all those friends and focus. Use this night. Let this be a night of determination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let her be free. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause sickness. I cause infirmity. I'm going to pray for the sick, but then I cause sickness from your body in the name of Jesus. And every act of witchcraft, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. I lay my hands upon this baby. What's the name? What's your child's name? Madam, what's your child's name? Destiny. I lay my hands upon destiny and I speak to you. Be made whole right now from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, be prayerful. Yeah? Be prayerful. There are some things I cannot show here, but you see, let me speak in parables. You cannot come and collect my thing and pretend not to know me. Are you getting what I'm saying? You cannot come and collect my thing in the secret and stand in the secret pretending not to know me. It's very important. Be prayerful and he's either Lord of all. He cannot share his glory with any other thing. You get what I'm saying, madam? The Lord is going to lift you and tell you, please, I want to pray for your children because the devil wants to oppress them. This is your child. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is spirit. Let her go now. Out! By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I pray for you. I'm seeing three babies. There are some women here. I'm seeing a woman particularly who came here specifically for the issue of fruit of the womb. Please, who is that person? No, you are not standing for anybody you came for yourself who is that person let me just minister to the person very quickly please let's save time fruit of the womb because the lord is showing me i just had the cry three babies congratulations madam where is she your name is glorious we lift you up higher There's somebody here. You are here with five broad. Right now as I'm talking. Great wisdom for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, I see the healing angels. Stepping into this place. We we'll begin to minister to the sick proper now. I don't know why God does it. But he's going to do it again in a strange way. The anointing of God is going to come upon a lady. And she's going to shout. That loud shout will usher in the coming of the healing anointing. Please don't ask me why this thing happened. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. If you're sick in your body, please make your way to the front right now. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Everyone begin to pray, Lord, touch me. Please, if you're sick, just, just give them way. We're going to minister to them very quickly. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed. that's the end of it my dear that devil leaves you forever never to return never to return listen 
I want you to know that Jesus heals here. We have a track record by the grace and the mercies of God. I'm going to minister to you very quickly so that we can speak specifically. Please make your way to the front. Just organize yourself and um, bring the lady. Where's the lady under the anointing? Case here. I know. Eh? Look at, let me just calm down. I'm seeing something very funny and interesting here. Watch this. This woman, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a corpse. I'm seeing somebody they have already buried. You see her? This woman is almost quarter to go. I mean, it's not clear there, but there's almost nothing here. Bones. Watch this. Um, the spirit that wants to kill this woman is in her son. This boy standing. It's not like it's the boy that wants to kill her. So they went to consult with somebody. Huh? They went to consult with somebody. This person is like a herbalist. And he told them this is the boy that wants to kill the madam. He got it wrong because his understanding is limited. It's not like the boy wants to kill her. But the spirit at work in him is what is tying her. Both of them. This is the spirit of death. She would have died on the 22nd of this month. 22nd. She would have buried her. It would have been over. She would have stopped talking from 19th and died on the 22nd. God, you are higher than any other. I can't say He's awesome in power. God. Come on, sing it like victorious people. I got to voice and say he God is greater, hey. my God is stronger. that spirit that is responsible to maintain this Mama she looks like a fuller human she understands how father in the name of Jesus, perfect her. I curse this spirit. I take her out of these dungeons of death. Right now. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh God. hallelujah the last and greatest session of this meeting is where I begin to prophesy that's where people receive the biggest breakthroughs and testimonies we may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but I want you to know that God is going to bless you Peter Adola is going to come up and for the next 10 minutes or so, he's going to lead us through a dimension of worship and praise unto God. And the moment that happens, I will come back and we'll take up the last session with prophecy and then we'll take a few announcements. We're done. Everybody give Jesus praise as we celebrate him.
worship you, Jesus. Celebrate you, Jesus. Which one? Which are the pianos? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we were. 
without you now say I'm lost without you I'm lost without I'm you I'm lost without you let the rain of your presence fall on say I am lost without you cover us with your grace Jesus <laughs> say I'm lost without you let the rain of your presence Oh God, I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. We give you all the glory and the honor and adoration to your holy name. Yes, I'm lost without your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. 
break every chain. Break every riches. So break every chain. 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 Come on, say, break every chain. Break every chain. Every chain. Every chain. I see the chains are broken now. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every Say break every chain. Say. Oh. 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 Break every chain.
glory and the honor and the praise and I'll tell you With the lifting up of our hands to you, so we worship. With our hearts open wide to you, oh, we worship. Hallelujah to your name. Song, join me and say, You have a wonderful Say hallelujah as a higher spread. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the chorus said, Hallelujah. Just leave him there. It's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have a few minutes and then we're done. I salute everyone. We'll have the last prayer session and then I'll just prophesy and speak over our lives. So can we all rise inside and outside?
I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and needs and needs to come. I will sing before His throne forever and ever. Your holy, holy, yes, You are holy. Hallelujah. Mighty one. Psalm 66, verse 3, please. Our last prayer session. We're going to be praying and we're going to be making decrees and commanding our lives and destinies. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy money? Or are you just allowing it to happen? Believers have authority. But we must put the authority to use. And then we compel these powers to submit. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. I want you to believe in the prayer session we're about to have right now. Very brief, but very impactful. And I want you to pray and pray like your heart depends on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, when Moses began to advocate the release of the nation of Israel, God's covenant people into their promised land, when the pressure got so much, Pharaoh negotiated. He said, all right, let, we have a deal. The men can go, leave the women and the children. Leave the factors that represent the continuity of that race, the women and the children, let the men go because he knew they would perish. And Moses said, no way. We're going with our wives, our children, our cattle, and everything. So we're going to pray. The Bible says, now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And it says, God had blessed him in all things, not some things, all things. It's, it's possible for you to experience breakthrough and advancement in one area of your life, but then you are tied in another area. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us about a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a great man. He did exploits, fought valiantly, but he was leprous. So we want to address those buts. Those situations in our lives, yes, you have done well, you are anointed, yes, this and that, but there are certain areas, it must be total victory. Rise up on your feet. I want you to shout it after me, say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia, say in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I come against every power that attempts to fight my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I declare release of every other area of my life that is under attack. And I declare this morning that it is my time for breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, 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 people of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Mention the areas in your life that are pending that need the breakthrough hand of God. Mention those areas specifically. Please lift your voice and pray. Take this session seriously. We're almost done. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for every area of your life that is yet to experience breakthrough. Decree and declare that after this vigil, 
you will begin to experience breakthrough in that area by the power of the Holy Spirit we ward off the powers of hell standing against our lives and destinies are you praying hallelujah hallelujah was you praying when Moses finally convinced Pharaoh to release them watch this as they released them while they were going the Bible says they met a Red Sea so they had left Egypt but there was a Red Sea in front of them are we together now and the Egyptians were back to capture them and they began to cry and in Exodus chapter 14 Moses said stand still stand still he says the Egyptians you see today oh you may have seen them for 430 years but today the Egyptians you see today he says that you would not see them and then he said Moses verse 15 now Moses was crying before God and he said why will you cry tell the people to move forward make advancement listen this prayer we are going to pray is important because many of us this prayer will supply courage hear me it's time to move forward it's time to move forward in business it's time to move forward in your career are you hearing what i'm saying you are going to pray and say lord everything keeping me down maybe it's the failure of the past maybe it's the lies of satan he has lied to you maybe you are falling again you entered a relationship, it did not work. You have refused to enter another one to get married. You did business and it did not work. And the devil is stopping you from moving forward. You, you tried to give birth and you had a miscarriage. But right now, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs do not go before you, they follow you. When you take the step of faith, God is ministering to someone. It's time to get back. The anointing is still there where you fell is where you will rise and excel the anointing is still there lift your voice and prophesy i'm moving forward go ahead and pray pray in my ministry i'm moving forward i refuse to allow challenges and limitations stop me inside and outside i'm moving forward in every area of my life you wanted to start a building project a challenge came and you have refused to move forward you tried to get admission you tried once twice it didn't work listen it says tell the people to move forward koinonia i announce to you an anointing by an encounter with power is upon your life to begin to move forward now prophesy lord i'm moving forward i break those barriers i refuse to see challenges that project is doable the project is doable the marriage is doable come on pray now the ministry can rise it's achievable it's achievable is achievable i may have been thrown down once but it is achievable there is still an anointing hallelujah hallelujah my bible says there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down samson was a mighty man of power but for some reason he was anointed to be the judge over Israel and for some reasons he fell into the trap of a woman called Delilah and that trap costed him his eyes they plucked out his eyes and they shaved him you would have thought that would be the end of Samson once a giant the one who threatened the Philistines the one who tore a lion and brought honey out of it the one who removed a city gate God is ministering to some people here. 
you have tasted power and honor but something happened somewhere and brought you down but tonight god is speaking to you that there is hope for a tree you can rise again when they took samson and they took him to the temple and they were mocking him before our god he prayed a prayer he prayed a prayer of restoration that lord this one last time let this anointing come upon me and the bible says he pushed he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime can i tell you something you should know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person we live in a generation where every time you fail there are so many people coming to prove to you justifying their prophecies are you getting me now you start a business or a company it fails and everybody tells you you see you start a ministry genuinely called by god no growth there is failure and people tell you stop wasting your time a gentleman gets up and says i'm going to get married and no finances no resources no job and everybody tells him you'll be a failure or maybe a student you went to the board and you saw that you're on probation let me announce to you tonight that it is never over until you choose to give up are you hearing what i'm saying i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes i will never forget our first crusade our first crusade in joss you would have rated it maybe a failed crusade because they were not people they were not much we saw miracles we saw mighty things but the people were few we were stranded listen a crusade would happen the crusade was to start by 5 30 as about as at three o'clock the car was still spoiled we we're still on our way going i'll never forget the driver tried and tried and tried we didn't even have enough money we just had enough money to take us there how we were going to survive are you getting what i'm saying listen when you see a successful man, don't just celebrate the stories. Ask the person for the pains and the scars. Successful people are those who have forced any closed door to open. They are not those who do not have challenges. Are you getting the point now? I will never forget that crusade was powerful. Immediately after the crusade, the sound guys were standing. 150,000 were to pay them. It looks like child's play now but then it meant a lot because even if everybody in the ministry then came together we would not be able to solve it but we knew that God sent us I knew what God had told me a great crusade the first crusade we did not even have we could not rent video cameras I'll never forget the humiliation that I went through from the sound people it was, it was such a bitter humiliation those people frustrated my life literally because I could not afford it. I'll never forget one doctor in chemistry department on hearing on this situation, she took 5,000 and sold it as a seed. It was a disaster. I would have easily given up and said, that's it, Lord, no ministry again. Imagine the millions of lives within this country and around the world who have been blessed by this ministry. If I had given up at that point, God is speaking to someone. Peter tried to catch fish all night. Nothing happened. He would have packed up. Successful people are those who are audacious. Don't mind the mediocre around your journey to success. They will always wait there to make you feel like you're a failure. They will always make to claim their prophecy is self-fulfilling. When you succeed, I guarantee you, every one of them will change their reports about you nobody has time to celebrate you on your way to success but when you arrive 
the worst that can happen is that you can be criticized but no man can deny that this is the finger of God I remember Dr. Paul and Enche 99 right when they went to Abuja him his wife and two pastors were staying in one small room not by will that was all they could afford you would have called them failures do you know what it means for a man married with his wife and you cannot afford a house you carry your wife and two pastors you are staying in the same room but that's what it's been called today listen I want you to know right now we are going to pray you are going to challenge your fears and challenge your limitations those voices that have spoken to you and made you feel that you cannot become anything they may be the voices of good people they may be the voices of sincere people but I come to prove them wrong lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus everyone shout it in the name of Jesus I'm determined to succeed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus my failures of yesterday will not stop me from achieving the breakthroughs of tomorrow I receive courage and fresh grace to face this mountain and to surmount it lift your voice and pray grace oh God lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray shake it take it take it take it no weeping and just for a night joy comes with the morning no weeping and just for a night the Lord is speaking to you joy comes with the morning you didn't get the admission but it does not mean it cannot be gotten the marriage didn't work out the travel abroad did not work out it does not mean you cannot travel the business did not work out it does not mean you are a failure you may not have money now you may not have connection now nobody may recognize your anointing but keep pressing keep pressing hallelujah hallelujah we are still praying you are going to pray and cry for supernatural persistence and endurance listen let me tell you you can ask every one of the ministers here Barak who ministered and Peter Adole, Manasseh, Pastor Alpha ask all of them they will tell you stories and episodes of endurance listen there was a time in my life I was tightening and I was giving nothing was happening are you getting what I'm saying any man that just tells you it just happened like that lied to you I'm telling you there are seasons in your life where it looks like your heavens are closed although they are not closed are you getting what I'm saying nothing like a result is happening you are planting bearing precious seeds but nothing is happening as a man of God you know the anointing upon your life while you are laboring in the spirit nobody is recognizing your grace to invest in it you can be a great worshiper and for many years you may be moving around crying for just one open door but the doors may not open listen to me you can be a lady pretty and virtuous you've done everything you need to do in your strength sincerely speaking you've done everything you know a woman should do to be prepared for marriage before God and men everyone knows truly you are prepared for marriage all the demons to be casted have been casted out but no man is coming and vice versa for a man you may graduate with a great degree you have served you've even complimented on your degrees submitted CVs let me tell you something in every man's life there are seasons of persistence and endurance I want you to know this don't let any man fool you God is a God of speed not rush God does not rush he brings speed not rush there are seasons where you are proven 
the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. There is something called a man's season of appearance. You can manifest before your season of appearance and keep struggling trying to find relevance. Years ago, he may remember, we went for a meeting in, in Kaduna, a very powerful meeting. And when we went there, there was a man of God who was supposedly a bishop. There was nothing bishop about him. When you launch yourself without your season of appearance, the man was there and after the meeting, I, I could not even figure one person who came to say, Kai, man of God, you bless me. The bishop was there moving around, no friend, no car, no nothing. We went to the restaurant. He just sat down somewhere and was just taking his power house. Nobody was even encouraging him. And I said in my mind, Lord, if this is how it means to be a bishop, I don't want. This honor, when God blesses you, he brings honor with it. When you launch yourself, you will keep floating, looking for relevance. I'm speaking to many of us here. We are at the verge of breakthroughs. Keep holding on. There are times you don't need to do anything new. You just need to keep doing what you are doing. Because what you are doing is not wrong. If a baby, we have a few babies around here. If a baby suddenly decides to take one drum of breast milk, that baby will not suddenly get up and become an adult because he took breast milk. If an old man starves himself to die, he will not suddenly become young because there was no food. Are you getting what I'm saying? And Jesus grew. He didn't become. He didn't jump. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Life is in dimensions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are times in your life you will need to wait. Listen, you may be a man of God, anointed. It is true that God has spoken to you about ministry. But for now, all you will be doing is cleaning tables. Be faithful. You must receive grace for endurance. Because let me tell you, hope defers makes the heart weary. The heart of man is, is, is very fragile. The moment you wait after a season of practicing kingdom principles and you don't see results, naturally speaking, naturally speaking, fatigue will come in. You're going to lift your voice. Are you still tired? We're rounding up. This is a very important prayer point. Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive grace for endurance. I receive grace for persistence. I receive grace for resilience. I will wait. I will be patient until my season of appearance. Lift your voice and pray. Patience, oh God. If you turn aside in the day of battle, it says your strength is small. Lift your voice and pray. Persistence persistence endurance in prayer endurance in obedience hallelujah two more prayer points the bible tells us that a virgin called mary was just minding her business one day suddenly an angel appears to her listen appears to her with a prophetic message thou art highly favored blessed are you among women and she wondered what salutation this was and the angel began to tell her that she was going to carry a baby and she said how shall these things be i know not a man just like god is telling you the same you who is standing one day you will own your television station and the world will be watching you and you look around and say how shall these things be and he said the
power of the highest shall overshadow you. Watch this. The moment God told Mary because her life at that time was an unusual life and then the angel recommended her to Elizabeth. Somebody who was carrying the same mystery and the same vision. You will never make it in life if you are the only one who looks like you. There must be people around your life that can identify no matter how mystical the instructions are. There must be somebody around your life that can say, although this looks strange, I see that the hand of God is upon it. Loneliness in destiny has killed many people. They are carrying visions. They, they have no other shoulder to lean on. And Mary went to Elizabeth. Every other woman would have said, you are very stupid. Tell us the rabbi you slept with that you are lying that a spirit got you pregnant. But she went to a woman who had been barren for a long time. So she's in a position that can identify with these kinds of supernatural things. Watch this. And the Bible says, as soon as Elizabeth, Mary and Elizabeth saw the babies, the destinies in their wombs leapt. You need people around your life that can look at you and say that 300 million naira project is doable how much do you have 10 naira say yes i was once like that you need people in your life that can be crazy enough and you say sir i'm trusting god for a house or a car by the end of the year how much do you have two thousand he said you are even better than me when I was about to buy the car, I had 500 naira. Suddenly, you know you are not alone. There is nothing as encouraging as finding a madman like you. Somebody who can agree with you and say it is doable. It's a dangerous thing for a man of God. Dangerous thing for a businessman. Dangerous thing for a destiny shaker to be around people who do not have any experience that can engineer faith in you are you getting what i'm saying that you come and say my sister i want to share with you something don't be afraid though say what is it say do you know i don't have a womb and the lady will not say ah what is all that say abba your case is a simple case there was a woman like that it's not just that she didn't have a womb in fact her own was a, a bad case but she had twins you see that that's elizabeth you need to call for Elizabeth to your life because many of us are about giving up on visions that are of God but there are no motivators there are no people to tell you it is doable who said you can't start a bank everybody say bank what nonsense are you talking about somebody tells you you can do it you can do it you can start the bank you pray them into your life are you getting me there are ladies right now this is August but you heard from God genuinely and you are trusting God to be settled by December. You, if you meet a wrong person, the person will look at you and say, I have what nonsense. How many months will it take for traditional marriage? How many months will it take to raise offering? Uh, sorry, to raise the, uh, raise the money for the marriage? How long will it take? Do you know how much wedding gown is? Do you know how much it means to rent a house? Do you have 1.5 million? All those devilish things. You need to throw those people away and meet somebody who tells you I, I met my guy in October we married by December 15th it is possible lift your voice and say in the name of Jesus I call forth to my life the Elizabeths of my destiny say after me in the name of Jesus I call into my life my destiny motivators may they come to encourage me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray we call for the elizabeth we call for the elizabeth we call for the elizabeth men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion men and women of similar vision and women of similar passion
Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. As I prophesy to us, please, I want you to receive it. Receive it with all your heart and receive it with a loud shout of Amen. The Lord gave me a revelation on the creative power of prophecy. And we've had all kinds of humbling testimonies. He said, Son of man, can these bones live? And he said, Only down the west. Then he said, Prophesy, speak to these bones, speak to these situations. As far as I am concerned, there is nothing called impossible, not when God steps in. It is impossible when there are men, but not when God steps in. I pray for you right now, in the name that is above all names, that every door that before now has been closed over your life and your destiny by the anointing of the Holy Spirit return to find that door open now I prophesy it upon you return to find that door open in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life where your strength is limited you have done everything you know to do I'm declaring upon you right now let a fresh anointing take you through the remaining part of the journey in the name of Jesus Christ where your human strength has stopped may an anointing come and pick you up in the name of Jesus Christ when Jesus was about to start his ministry a voice spoke no matter how anointed you are it will take somebody to announce you please listen i show you a mystery no matter how anointed you are a midwife although she's a midwife she won't deliver a baby by herself when it is time for her to deliver she would need other midwives no man can bless himself no man can endorse himself are you hearing what i'm saying a voice had to be spoke out had to speak from heaven and say this is my beloved son and he commanded the world to hear him lift your hands let me speak over your destiny your destiny remains grounded until a voice can speak in the realm of the spirit a simple prophetic word but it's a profound law i'm praying for you right now by the anointing of the holy spirit everything that has covered your glory everything that has covered your your gift and your potential from being seen desired and celebrated i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak it to you right now is your time for recognition it's time for your gift to be noted it's time for men to pay attention to what you carry in the name of jesus christ and I call for the helpers of destiny, the wine pressers, the bakers, those who will speak to the king on your behalf. I call them into your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare upon you that all the years that the canker worm has eaten, all the years the palmer worm has eaten, what you think is forgone, what you think is a waste. I'm prophesying to you right now. May there be double restoration. May there be double restoration. Double restoration. I pray for every family represented here. In the name that is above all names. Not only will you receive visitation. I release visitation to families. Families, families. In the name of Jesus. Let there be visitations. May the Lord wipe the tears of families in the name of Jesus Christ. Every project you want to embark on, these hands that are lifted, I put an anointing upon it and I force it to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything your hand embarks upon in the name that is above all names, may you prosper in it in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your finances listen when you are not empowered financially you will be limited in many ways there's no long story about it 
Hallelujah. Cry yet say in Zechariah 1.17a Thus saith the Lord, my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion. It takes finances to fund your assignment. It takes finances for you to move forward. Most of my experiences and the new seasons in my life have come as a result of encounters. Most of them. Most of them have come as a result of encounters. Now, let me tell you this. There are negative, demonic, and satanic encounters. Pay attention. I must tell you this. For instance, there are many people today in deception and the confidence that their deception thrives on is the encounters that they had. There are many people who believe they went to heaven. I tell you by the authority of scripture, where they went was not heaven. I can tell you this. Both the description, the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to. There are people today who claim they had out of body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits, familiar spirits. They thought it was the Holy Spirit. Do you know that almost every error in the body of Christ today came as a result of these same encounters? Many people will tell you, I had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me, right. And from there, they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error. People have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see, I'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger. Hunger. When you find a believer who is hungry, please be fast to guide that person because Satan too looks for hunger. Hunger is proof of health. When people are sick, the first thing they lose is appetite. So you want to start on a journey. I want to know you. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to love you with all my heart. That drives you to a seven days drive, prayer and fasting. And you are praying, you are lying down, you are rolling left, right and center. And Satan finds an opportunity. Your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration. And Satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds i will tell you why i'm teaching what i'm teaching tonight it's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because I fear for my generation, our appetite for Rema, our appetite for new dimensions, our appetite for the angelic realm, our appetite for the prophetic realm is, is driving us into dimensions that if not guided, you have not yet seen error that will come to the body. I tell you, in the next five, six, ten years, if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of Christ, many young people will delve into different versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano also one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I, jokes apart i really mean it i wouldn't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking after service this boy stood wore a regalia and then someone was standing by his side I don't, know, I don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer hmm. prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit 
and I will teach you how to create that guidance. Encounters. It, I've started by appreciating encounters, but I am telling you, there, there, is, there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of Christ is in trouble. And it's encounters that will lead to the error of this generation of believers encounter satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of christ through encounters pseudo christian experiences pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices. They stepped into the prophetic and the Holy Ghost has never been part of any revelation. Most of those revelations come from demons. Do they hear well? Yes, sir, they hear. Now, I'm not being, listen, listen, when you, when you are here, don't just be listening and thinking of any man of God. I'm teaching the body of Christ. Because most of the people, you see, when you hear this, some of us already have preconceived biases. And the bias is because we've never really been serious with God. It's not because we are passionate. We've not been serious with God. So anything that looks supernatural, we fight it. I'm not endorsing your laxity. There are all kinds of errors. Those errors continue to be translated into teachings. You see, the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter, the urge to document it and to share it is there. And we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause. Anything that is scarce, anything that is new, anything that looks like rema, it looks like you derive your respect in the body of Christ from the scarceness of your communication. If we are not careful, there will be bitter casualties. I tell you this by the Spirit. Many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation mm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around Asia eventually when I started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day I had to say uh-uh 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 uh -uh, uh -uh, something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what I'm saying so you'll understand. Number one, encounters are important. We need encounters so that they create convictions. But number two, encounters are a two-edged a two sword. On one hand, they can bless and lift. But on another hand, they can bring conviction towards error that destroys. Are we together? So people have delved into all sorts of things. Young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things. There are people who have bought all sorts of books. You get into a Christian library right now and you look at the books that are there. Sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books. The moment you open, you wonder, was it the Holy Spirit who inspired this? There are dangerous and devilish books. There are people who have read certain books and while they were reading, the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost. They went into realms and dimensions, interacted with strange spirits and came. Do you know how many religions are in the world? We live in an internet age. I give you as an assignment. When you go type religions, how many religions are in the world? Enter. You will be amazed. 
let me tell you this every single one of those religions have followers if they did not have followers they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion and those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters this is the secret that can preserve a destiny can preserve a ministry so that you don't start something and after 10 years you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again supernatural encounters now let me explain something why do encounters have negative side effects also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction it's called an encounter are we together now but now i'm talking about visionary encounters do you know if you are open to the realm of the spirit there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately you are open to the realm of the spirit number one you'll find out that being open to the realm of the spirit either by the holy ghost or any other spirit already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if i hold this plant in the realm of the spirit i don't have to study it biologically you see that now yes i can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding you have to understand how i'm giving you certain examples in the realm of the spirit time and distance does not operate the way it works here if i need to move from here to this fan i will have to walk but in the realm of the spirit i can be here and immediately leave this spot and i am there an example what happens to you when you are in a dream you can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes you are somewhere else the same you and yet you are still there lying down in your room are we together now now in the realm of the spirit the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you have to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy 
to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of Christ we return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic because the prophetic works by the same formula you are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit but when there is no system to order and organize it based on scripture you can download all kinds of things that's why some work some don't work because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit what i'm teaching you may look a bit complicated but just pay attention you will understand what i'm saying hallelujah i have had several visionary encounters by the grace of god this is a realm of reality that i live in and I can tell you, if the Lord did not teach me the system of guidance that I want to provide for you, I probably would have been in all shades of error by now. All shades of error. The next thing I need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes. And you must understand not the activity but the spirit, the meaning of those activities. Because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of Christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit. So I give you an instance. If in the realm of the spirit, I, I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing. I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening. I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw. So if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit, it may be a prophetic typology of something, but then I come physically and I now say, well, based on what I saw, except if God says to act it out. But I now tell the person, do what you saw. And by the time that person leaves and gets result, someone else will come and before you know it, it will become a spiritual pattern. Are we together now? Yes. Someone will now go to his house and say, for me to get a miracle, I must walk around five times with no understanding. When God began to open me up to encounters, I became troubled myself. Once upon a time, those days in Zaria, there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust, silver dust, physically. Gold dust would begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history. It began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters. It didn't last more than three weeks and God seized it till tomorrow. It was an act of his mercy. Otherwise, some people would have built monuments around it. You see that now? There is a serious disclaimer. Listen, do you know why I'm teaching you this? Don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days, fast 30 days, unguided and unassisted. It looks like an accurate spiritual journey, but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle. They will interact with devilish spirits. They will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse. You now regret the fact that you expose the people this way. We have to be careful. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. And if we do not submit ourselves to it, we will be in trouble. When Jesus Christ began to walk with the disciples, we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints. Are we together now? Yeah. Supernatural encounters. The realm of the spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities haven't said this the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body 
Remember, the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters. One of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters. But I will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error. Almost all encounters, if left unbalanced, will bring error. Almost all encounters, if left unbalanced, or in, how do I put it now? Is, is it unbalanced? Will bring all kinds of error. The body of Christ today is like a patient in ICU. And encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance. There are men and women of God today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters. There are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters. And you see, one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence. The moment you are convicted about something, eventually someone will believe you. I hope you're understanding what I'm teaching so far. Yes. So the Bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters. This was the first thing the Lord began to teach me that before i am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences i must understand the pattern of scripture so that all of these encounters i have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how god behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them i have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times i do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why i do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry, for instance, will feel bad, feel insulted, and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions. It's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience. How long have you been born again? Ten years. Do you see? Do you hear? Well, not exactly. I hear the Holy Ghost sometimes. Well, ah, I say, my goodness, my God. That means something is wrong with your Christian experience. So, in a bid, in a bid to honor um, what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth, there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra, anything that just, just let me hear a sound, let me see a being, demonic or spiritual. Let me just see something and hear something. And because of that hunger, on one hand, God intends to give you these encounters. But the reason why for many of us, God does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them. It's not because your spiritual level has not reached there. God just wants to help you. He's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine. Are we blessed this is how the Lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things I've seen standing here and preaching if I did not have this understanding that I'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon Every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight, you will keep seeing. The discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers. Many sincere people do not have that. Every time their eyes see something, there is an urge to say what they are seeing. And it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers. So you see that services become full of just revelatory processes, not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught 
that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now the average man of god is under severe pressure right now pressure for the prophetic pressure to be able to reveal something if you go to pray with someone and you bring bible verses and you tell the person acts chapter this verse this says this you you, you can even see the disconnect we wasted our time prepared honorarium cooked food to come and receive this rubbish there you see that there, there is something wrong while you are laughing i want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things god is not saying body of Christ hear me this is not just a message for koinonia this is a message for the body of Christ when a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears but we're not interested and very clearly the person becomes frustrated and as a result he will say you know what if this is the formula for relevance let me go for my fasting and the devil says exactly this is what i wanted he waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from god's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you i submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what i want to teach you now there is a road map that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed so the bible lets us know that encounters are very important they create conviction whether encounters just with the word as you're studying of visionary encounters when God was giving me a revelation about this ministry I had supernatural encounters I've shared some of them with you my life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life you would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters they would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision is that true and he saw this and that and explain it several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry there are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of Christ today. Now, let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters. Rule number one, no encounter is equal to doctrine. No encounter, no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine. Do not make doctrine out of encounters. do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is god's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so 
if let me let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture every encounter no matter even if it's jesus you see any encounter must submit to scripture no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the holy spirit and scripture has to interpret that are we together now most people just come up with their ideas about encounters this is what i saw this is what i saw i think this should be it and we ship it down and mislead people that includes dreams look up please when you wake up from a dream you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it except if that book submits to scripture are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters take note of these rules one remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth jesus the early church the patriarchs have set enough precedence there is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain onto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for so doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture not your ideas scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have 
there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed I have kept these four encounters and I pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as I approach the realm of the Spirit and I'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of Christ these encounters that I'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears I'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what I'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the Lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as I share this with you the Lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your Christian experience is concerned four encounters the Lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of Jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down just be patient and write it down the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can I tell you this no matter how many visions you see in your life if you do not have an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God you are going to hell it's as simple as that encounters don't redeem people it is Jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living God so if you have 30 encounters in your life and Jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living God the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living God it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living God that the Holy Spirit through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of Jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the Bible says it's an encounter this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son it says whosoever hath the son hath life eternal everybody say encounter with the son 
there are many people today I'm sorry to use this expression but even people in ministry who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter I hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the son of God I know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can I tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living God this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living God you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's the true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of God number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry the ministry of the Holy Spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living God you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit please look up the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the Holy Spirit is for everybody Jesus told us that he is the only shorty to our being guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth Satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit <laughs> an encounter with the Holy Spirit is more than praying in tongues no just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues when we say have you met the Holy Ghost you say yes no 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 just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person no you benefited from the person but have you met the person can I tell you this especially for those of us who are called into ministry all those who have been mightily used by God from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit we've dealt with that here so I don't want to go so deep into that the Holy Spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit is not an archangel the Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit no the Holy Spirit is God you can encounter his office when you are encountering the Son he plays a role there but you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit it is true The benefit of that encounter is guidance I've taught you the benefit of that encounter is empowerment direction the Holy Spirit so that whatever you see and whatever you hear you can trust him to guide you he will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him you do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from God or not no it is the voice of the Holy Spirit that will help you decipher you will see many good things in your Christian experience but they are not from God it's not in this kingdom is we don't deal with good or bad we deal with whether the Holy Spirit is involved or not no matter how good it is 
if the Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of the Father is not involved in that process stay away no matter how good encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit koinonia is God helping you tonight so there are times while I'm having several visions maybe in the miracle service and all of that you see it happen I can have the vision say of a coffin and I can see death now I don't just announce the Holy Spirit listen all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision I see that does not glorify the Sun I will never announce it I will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what God wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why I'm teaching you this because I have had this encounter with the Son of God every other encounter I have I must ask myself does this encounter reveal Jesus and does this bring him glory either in my life or the life of those I'm about to minister it to if it does not capture the revelation of the Son and the glorification of the same no matter how spectacular the vision is I will dump it is someone learning now an encounter with the Son gives balance to every other encounter you have if it does not reveal the Son and does not bring him glory throw it out of your life number two an encounter with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit gives you direction the Holy Spirit gives you guidance let me tell you this I wish we had the time I hope you know that in your Christian experience you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results but if you have a rich ministry with the Holy Spirit you will be able to know that this is not the Holy Spirit and you may even be able to help them listen in my life and in ministry I've had the opportunity of praying for people especially kids kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities it was because of this relationship with the Holy Spirit are we together remember in the book of Acts the experience of Paul remember the little girl who was using divination many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry many of us you can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that that is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance she even volunteered this is a great man I mean what else would you for someone to announce you using her credibility but he looked and looked and said no something is wrong the Holy Spirit I have met people in my life this is a true story I have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me and they were not Christians they've not given their life to Christ not it's not something hidden I remember one time I think it was Niger I was going to have a meeting I think it was Niger Republic or so and we were going we went we flew to Lagos and then went by road somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities I remember some of you go to the market and you see these people they are there they can call your name with uncanny accuracy if you do not have an encounter with the Holy Spirit your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion Joshua Selman ah who are you well I'm not exactly an evil person but I'm not by everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source what source powers that vision it is not the correctness of the information is the source that powers it and listen you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the Holy Spirit is not alive by what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake it is on the strength of your relationship with the Holy Spirit you can decipher Are we learning now yes sir there are times that I've shaken hands with people and I look at them sincerely 
and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and I know this is not God sometimes I make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised I know a woman one time that I prayed for this woman would have visionary encounters people would come to her house she can pray for you she said she had testimonies of people who were buried who God opened their wombs but she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep she will be tormented by evil spirits yet this gift supposedly was working in her life the day I met her she came thank God she was a sincere woman she was honest and she told me she said this is a gift that has been working in her life people have sowed into her life she's had results but I knew this was not the spirit now it didn't mean the woman was bad I have a relationship with the Holy Ghost I know how he operates I know what is not him and I held the woman's hands and I prayed for her why did they flog the apostles in the Bible because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money there were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continue to torment that girl I love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least Jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the Holy Spirit listen to me until you cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like God that is not God there are many things that look like God speaking to your destiny I can prophesy favor upon you now and say in the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the Holy Ghost, you know how he operates. You know that this is not God. And you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest. There are times you sit down and you are doing, you are talking with people, you are about to do a business with them. They are so articulate, they are intelligent, everything is right. But here comes the Holy Ghost again. It tells you, no, no. I know I told you that I will bless you next week, but this is not it. The blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the Holy Spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the Holy Ghost will tell you take that job 50,000 when I am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the Holy Ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision I saw because you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost he will say take it whilst you are in that job your uncle will come and it is through that job you'll be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where God showed you now had you not heard God you will not even know how to navigate to that realm are we learning now number three very quickly encounter with the Word of God it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the Word of God please look at me if you are not sound in Scripture you see deception will be the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom god's modus operandi the word of god reveals number one god's character number two the word of god reveals how god operates when you encounter the word of god you know how god operates and you know how he does not operate there is a way the God of the Bible never operates never operates never operates
most believers are not sound in scripture that's why it's easy to fall into the trap of deception the devil comes and markets all kinds of lies and just sways us like that listen in this end time we need high level illumination knowledge of god's word to know what to do there are people who have no business relocating abroad but because they do not understand the character of scripture someone just tells you i want to lift you you have to go back to that encounter how does god lift the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Many things that we have called greener pastures are not greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. You see that? I'm not saying there's anything wrong having all these experiences, but the word of God must be your guide. Can I tell you this? As powerful as supernatural encounters are, if you start ministry just because you saw a vision, you will suffer as if it's not God that called you. There are people today who are frustrated and sometimes sincere people, when they come, they say, Apostle, I can't understand. They will show me a documentation of their vision and i know truly that vision came from god but it is the principle of scripture that controls your success the visions are only support systems to help guide your conviction when jesus came and walked upon the earth is it not heaven that he came from why did he need to learn scripture why would you come from heaven through the womb of a woman and submit yourself to the learning of scripture from heaven Jesus did not come from the realm of the spirit. He came directly from heaven, not even heaven, from the throne. He came to the earth and submitted himself to this encounter. So when Satan came, he didn't say, Satan, you are stupid. You forgot I am God. He said, it is written. He had a right to say, I hope you know I am God. Satan, I know this is you. My discernment is still in place. The Holy Ghost is in me. Leave this place no he wanted us to learn so he said it is written for every temptation the devil brought jesus did not use his encounters for defense he used scriptures it is written you don't tell the devil you are joking god called me that is nonsense the realm of the spirit does not care what has the bible said as your system of defense I can never fail. Why? I know what I saw. You are the only one who saw it. The realm of the spirit is asking you, why should we stop oppressing you? I saw a vision. In that vision, I saw a plant and it was bringing oranges. That's a vision, my brothers and my sisters. What will give you fruitfulness is it is written. I had many visions about koinonia in abuja i would have been surprised and shocked disappointed and frustrated if it was the only thing if i placed my vision on a billboard with my name written hello abuja i am joshua selman it happened on a thursday night when i was sleeping i saw the heavens open and i saw the map of abuja <laughs> you just laugh and say all these stupid people listen to me this ministry thrives not just because of visions. The visions benefit us and add to our convictions. But everything works because it is written. One more time, shout it. Say, it is written. One more time, say, it is written. That means anything you tell me that is not consistent with what is written, I can change it. Because this foundational encounter is greater than any other encounter. A genuine man of God, even if it's me, I can look at you and say that based on the vision I'm seeing, I saw an obituary. This is the reason why you see many times when I prophesy to people, I tell them what I saw, but I'm quick to tell them, no, 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 I'm not a prophet of doom. We have this encounter also. We have the power based on what is written to veto whatever it is that we have seen. This is what brings perspective to the, orchestra, the operation of the prophetic. Imagine that you come and I leave you. I say, ah, you came for koinonia. I don't know what brought you here today. Because with what I'm seeing, I saw a coffin. May God show you mercy. No, I didn't, I didn't know. Koinonia, why do you think you are going to succeed in life? Why do you think you will see the end of this year? 
listen 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 why do you think the dream you saw you saw them dragging your trouser in your primary school in that dream why do you think you will still succeed in spite of it listen to me it was written so that it cannot be changed I believe this no matter what my eyes sees no matter what my ears hear no matter what encounters I have I only believe those encounters if I find them consistent with what is written if that encounter is not consistent with what is written I use what is written to change that encounter listen this looks like I'm just joking with you. If you don't learn this, you will live a defeated Christian life. Having visions and you'll never succeed. This is the reason why many people have notebooks full of visions. And there is no, there is no progress in their lives. Because they ignore this. They throw it away. And they begin to move according to what I saw. I saw, um, what's today's date? I saw 15th of August. And then I saw dollars. That's a vision. That will not give you favor. It may be that God is telling you through that similitude that I want to bless you. But whether it will happen or not depends on it is written. What you do with that vision is you now open your scripture and you now find scriptures that are consistent with that vision. That vision now supports your confidence. But the real producer of the results is not what you saw. Is It is written. One more time shout it. It is If I didn't believe this, I would have died since. Since I would have died since. You don't know the kinds of visions. You know, as a man of God, people send you all kinds of things. I've had well-meaning people send me text messages. Apostle, be careful. I saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not wrong. Some of them are accurate prophets of God. I'm not, this is not sarcasm. Sincere people. And I know that was the plan of the devil. So when you wake up in the morning and you have a dream, don't wait for miracle service. No. Open your Bible and let it is written collide with that vision. Listen, what I'm teaching you will give you confidence so that you are not you, you don't you don't become a victim. It's good to be blessed by men of God, but be careful so that we don't turn you into spiritual slaves. We are supposed to help you, not trap you. This is it. You need this more than Joshua Selman. Can I tell you, if you pay attention to this even more than Joshua Selman, you will succeed. This predates my arrival here. Many have come and gone. This remains written. Many have said many things and have had to cancel it. Many people have made prophetic statements and how to honorably withdraw it. But this has not been changed. Third foundational encounter. Encounter with the word of God. It's an indoctrination. This is the reason why my spiritual experiences profit me and they profit the body because I will never exalt any vision I see no matter how many days fasting no matter what it is if a demon spirit appears to me right now the first thing is I'm going to why is it there you see if it's there to oppress me it is written can take care of it if God is trying to send a message to me for the body of Christ I would discern the message when I'm done the demon will go but your confidence is it is written yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why because thou art with me listen thy rod and thy staff that's what comforts me thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so I want you to, if you don't know what is written, it means you are in trouble. 
imagine if Jesus did not know what was written and Satan says turn this stone into bread he says don't disturb me I am Jesus you'll be surprised Satan will still be standing there that's why he has not left your life because when you came to him he said I'm a member of koinonia he said nonsense what is that what is your member of koinonia before you were born I knew about koinonia I was in heaven what is the basis why should I leave you <sighs> okay what else do I say now listen why should you rise in life apostle declared over me you are joking apostle declared according to what I prophesied but I did as I was commanded I didn't prophesy as I wanted John said I am the voice it is not the voice that brings the power it is the word that the voice is echoing are we together now please learn what I'm telling you some of you by this there are papers you need to go back home and tear into pieces and sit with confidence and sleep like a baby and wake up it is written it is written my 2021 is blessed it is written it is written it is written it is written why do you think you'll be exempted from all the limitations that come ah, i am a member of koinonia that that is wonderful when you understand it to be that i am prophetically connected based on what the bible says but if it's just blindly i'm a member of koinonia you will you will be surprised i'm saying this because there are many believers who do not have a scriptural basis for confidence satan leave me alone why I know Apostle Joshua Selman and the demon who say, Jesus, I know. Me too, I know Jesus. Me too, I know Paul. Me too, I know Joshua Selman. You have to stand and say, you better know me too. It is written. Register it in the realm of the spirit that it is written. This is why I know that I will never fail in life. Thank God for the many visions that I have. But depending on those visions for success is deception. The visions are only guides. They are support systems. I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The basis for the victory of my life. The basis for the victory of this ministry. Is this immutable counsel of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. So when I tell you, you will rise, say amen, but don't just go back and say I will rise. No. When I say you will rise, quickly resort to this foundational encounter. Find the scriptures that support what I said. Then you will rise indeed. But if you just believe that just because I spoke to you, no. Are you seeing the balance now? this is why many of you do not profit from the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry is not fake it is a genuine spiritual ministry but just because an anointed man spoke over your life just because he revealed and what he revealed was true when he blessed you your spiritual life went down because you had confidence that this man knows god his word does not fail but you ignored it is written It is written, it is written. When men say there is a casting down, for me, I will say there is a lifting up. So based on that, when I say in the name of Jesus, you are exempted from evil, as you are saying amen, your mentality is connecting that amen with this. That's what plugs it into the power line to produce results. Anything I tell you, don't just say amen, connect it to a scripture, then you can now say amen. Are we together now when you wake up from a dream and you see me blessing you and praying for you don't just dance that you saw me find a scripture when you connect it to that vision you have given it life to manifest anything not connected to scripture does not have the life that brings manifestation 
you can have an encounter be in the realm of the spirit watch promotion and you return back and it will never manifest in this realm but when you connect that vision to it is written some of you is a few days after now you will really get all that I've taught you maybe I will just stop at this third encounter so anything I see I pass it through the encounter with the Son does it pass the test I pass it through the encounter with the Holy Ghost does it pass the test then I pass it through the encounter with Scripture if it passes the test then I receive it if it fails that test no matter how accurate it is I dump it in peace and I don't feel bad if you tell me apostle your life will be destroyed for instance I salute what you are saying but I go to it is written until I find the same thing you said here there is no reason for tears weep not for the book is open you only weep when the book is closed hear me there are arrows that fly by day you don't need a prophet to tell you that there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that waste in the noonday so if someone tells you he's not telling you anything new are we together now he's only revealing to you something that the Bible already says what today will someone tell you that the Bible has not told you generally speaking if someone tells you there is evil on earth in all honesty is that new it is written already told you if someone to tells you there is a possibility for failure is that new no the Bible already tells you most of the things we seek for in encounters scripture has already told us I want to succeed okay so how do you succeed if only I can see Joshua Selman I know my life will change you are right because of the prophetic dimension as written in scripture however you can sit with scripture this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do to do not just to read to do so it may be the doing part you are missing man of God what gives you confidence that you will thrive in ministry I know my mentor I know my father think again I know the spiritual tribe I'm connected to think again hmm. what makes you believe you will prosper I got a first class and then somebody prophesied to me and said I will never fail think again An encounter with the son of the living God you see because we have ignored these encounters many people keep meeting the apostolic and the prophetic ministry but they are never saved do you know that do you know that you can be in church for a long time you can even be part of the eldership and you have not met the son like it's happened to many people I'm not preaching from a standpoint of sarcasm this preaching tonight is coming from a heart that desperately loves the body of Christ and God's people generally speaking these were the things that the Lord taught me that have given me stability in my life today more than my visions listen if I come for miracle service today and I never see anything I never hear anything I can pick my Bible and read for you a scripture about healing and say the sick begin to be healed based on it is written don't tie yourself to just vi listen visionary experiences and all these supernatural encounters only become useful if they submit to these foundational encounters if you're a man of God here learn it and put balance to your administration of encounters people may clap for you while you are announcing visionary encounters but sooner or later you'll find out that there is no growth because it is not the encounters create convictions but their convictions are only strengthened by these foundational encounters 
when I learned this, I found rest. I travel for meetings and people expect to see the power of God. People expect to see the grace of God. And you would ask me, Apostle, what makes you think that people are going to be blessed? I will be stupid to tell you, I hope you know that this is an apostolic call. I hope you know that there are visionary experiences. I will be surprised that I will stand and the heavens will be closed. The basis of my confidence is it is written. What was written? The Lord walking with them confirming the words so every time i walk i do not walk alone you invite me but it's not only me that came i came with a battalion so when i came here and i began to speak and you saw the power of god manifest it's not just listen it's not just because i am anointed it's not just because i saw it's not just because something was told my ears more than those encounters I know that what I saw submitted to the truth of scripture. It is consistent with the character of the son, consistent with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, consistent with the character of scripture. And I know that God will honor it. Let me tell you this. You walk in this, you have received the vaccination for error. Now God can trust you with visions over nations. And you know how to administer the prophetic with accuracy. Why? Because you know how to pass it through. It is written. Apostle Jesus, prophet Jesus. Look at the respect he had for scripture. Every time they asked Jesus a question, he seldom spoke about his encounters. It is written. There are few times you will see Jesus talking about his encounters. Yet he was the fountain of all encounters. It is written. It is written. They say this in your law, but this is what I say. They say this, but this is what I say. His first sermon was not encounters. His first sermon was the spirit of the Lord is upon me because it was written by the prophets. Because he hath anointed me when he was done. He now said this scripture has been fulfilled this day. Let me prove to you that what is written is now manifest. Man with the withered hand, stretch your hands. Now, if you called him a fake man of God, he will refer you to it is written. Let me teach you something before we pray. If you're a man of God here, if you know that God has granted you grace for extraordinary manifestations of the Spirit, don't take for granted that the people who you are ministering to understand what you are saying. Show them the scriptural basis of that operation before you begin it, or at least before the end of that operation. You see me do it most times. Because if you do not see it from a scriptural standpoint, the devil may deceive you into thinking this is just superstition. Are we blessed? I have taught you an encounter with the spirit of wisdom, with favor. My life today is full of convictions. I don't teach things I don't believe. I don't teach things I'm not confident on. But my greatest encounters, brothers and sisters, hear me. My greatest encounters are not my encounters of Jesus, as wonderful as they are. My greatest encounters are not the encounters where I saw a crowd, of, a, a crowd of people. It's not an encounter with all of these saints of old. I only say those things sometimes to encourage you. The foundational encounters in my life that I respect and I honor, that have helped to shape this grace and have produced this that is a wonder and a blessing to the world today, is not just that vision. It's an encounter with the Son of the living God. His life that is at work in me. An encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. Giving me direction, helping me and guiding me part time. Investing the presence of God upon my life. Then an encounter with the word of God. Teaching me the character of the Christ and the modus operandi of the kingdom. The assignment of the anointing is to make sure the word of God does not look like a lie. I've taught you this without the, an encounter with the word of God you don't need anointing you cannot truly operate the anointing in isolation it will mislead people the assignment of the anointing is to validate what was said 
So if nothing has been said, the anointing has no ministry. Understand this. If the Lord says, let the sick be healed, and I declare it as his servant, the anointing moves to validate that claim. Apostle, I want to be anointed. See how Jesus anointed people in the Bible. He spent time teaching them doctrine. He taught them scripture. And then one encounter they had. Now they had the grace to validate these things. Many of you, if I drop a Bible here and I drop a bottle of oil, you would jump at the bottle of oil, even if it breaks on your head, you will still be laughing with the injury on your head because you believe you encountered the anointing. Please return back to the place of scripture. Sit down with your Bible. Start reading it like you did before. I've hardly seen anybody bring me a Bible and say pray on it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Please don't, you, if you have your bottle of oil, say no problem, I'm going to pray on it. But I'm saying we have to be careful. I've not seen anybody buy a clean King James Bible and say, Apostle, please pray on it, that God will open me up to the mysteries of the kingdom. No. But people have brought all kinds of things. People have brought sticks. People have brought uh, uh, water. People have brought handkerchiefs. Um, they are sincere people. I'm not saying they are wrong. People have brought sand. People have brought shoes. People have brought photos. People have brought food. People have brought all kinds of things. Where is the Bible here? It's not necessary. I just need a prophetic action immediately. Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw myself coming with oil and now I have come with it physically. I agree and I'm going to pray for you. Don't feel bad. I'm not being sarcastic. Okay? So what makes you think that this oil is going to work? Because you will anoint it. No. 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 The oil is not anointed because I lay hands on it. The oil is anointed because I lay hands on it with the understanding that the empowerment comes from scripture. So where you keep your anointing oil, where you kept your sand, where you kept your, your candle or whatever, just push it and put a Bible there. Don't ignore those things. Put a Bible first. Most believers would prefer to buy jars of oil jars of handkerchiefs and if you tell them okay what are you going through things are not working in my life listen to this message and then when you listen to this message get this scripture you see them smile at you and live with disappointment as though god punished you i came and i stood here this is what you are doing because god anointed you but the moment you come and you say kneel down turn stand up ah what is this they now begin to say something is going on ah goodness so my my case Listen, I'm not mocking the prophetic. I'm only giving you wisdom. There are times that I've prayed for people and I said, it's done. They didn't believe it. They stood there. Abba, it's done. With what I saw, I saw these guys rolling up and down. And you just touch me and say, you are distracted. Just focus on me and pray for me with all your heart. May God give us growth and maturity in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now listen, two disclaimers. One, you must be wise in communicating what you have heard tonight. Don't go around tearing down people. Don't go around insulting prophets and apostles. I have a responsibility to tell you this because there are many believers who have not understood what I've said, but they know how to use it and tear other people. They are not going to listen to me all the while. While I was talking, they were not paying attention. And yet they will go and say, uh-huh, this is what apostle was saying. No, no. I have a responsibility to teach you truth as instructed by God. But if and when I do communicate something that looks like I'm lashing out on people, you must understand that it's, number one is coming from a standpoint of love. And it's coming to a people who should be matured based on scripture. Are we together now? So some of you, maybe you, maybe your church or your pastor, you find them operating in the prophetic and they may even make some of these mistakes. Don't point hands at people. You remember that the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge, it is love. 
if God grants you the grace and you can explain and expound scripture more perfectly, that's fine. Otherwise, stay in the place of prayer and communicate love. Do not carry revelation like a sword and go and begin to tear people and cause injury in the body of Christ. It is not maturity. I have to put this disclaimer. Are we blessed? Let's pray now. Now that you have learned this, I can release the grace for encounters upon you. And I know that I did not make a mistake because now you know how to decipher encounters. You will be surprised that after this prayer, as I speak over your life, many of you will step into strange dimensions of the prophetic and visionary encounters, but they would not mislead you and they will not mislead others because you have been taught the foundational encounters that every other encounter must rest upon. Please lift your voice in one minute and give God thanks for the word tonight. Father, we bless you and we give you praise. The mystery of supernatural encounters. We bless you, we honor you. 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 In the name of Jesus. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. We bless you for the power of your word, for giving us understanding. We open up ourselves to supernatural encounters, knowing we are safe. We have been pegged by these foundational encounters. They become our boundary of safety, and we will never walk in error because we have encounters with the Son of the living God. We have encounters with the spirit of the living God. We have encounters with the word of God, the modus operandi of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank the Lord. No fear, no fear, no fear, no intimidation because these three encounters are for all. Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, find comfort. If you have not yet been open to the realms of visions, visionary encounters do not stand and feel bad don't let some of us that God has helped in that area intimidate you and do not use those visionary encounters as a measure sorry about that a measure of spiritual maturity are we together now no don't sit down and allow yourself to be misled that until I have these supernatural encounters I am not growing if you encounter the Sun you encounter the spirit you encounter the word keep moving you will move enviably to the place of destiny every other encounter that comes is only a supporting structure but i tell you you have gotten it right if you get the sun right you have gotten it you get the spirit right you have gotten it you get the word of god right you have gotten it now let me pray for you father in the name of jesus my first prayer for everyone is that these foundational encounters will become true in our lives in Jesus' name. For anyone here who is born again, you already have an encounter with the Son. But I pray for you that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will become real for you. I also pray for you that the ministry of the word especially because for many of us this is the area we have defaulted we love superstition africa loves superstition we love a lot of superstitious things but i pray for you the grace to settle with scripture till you have illumination understanding and confidence receive that grace in jesus name the grace to believe to respect and to exalt what is written above what you see above what you hear receive that grace in Jesus name and now I pray for you to support all of these foundational encounters may God open you strangely to the realm of the angelic may God open you strangely to the realm of visions May God open you strangely to the realm of trances and dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will reveal things to you 
through those platforms and then in partnership with these foundational encounters you will produce an excelling Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ hear me for anyone here who has had anything or seen anything in form of vision that negates what is written concerning you I use the authority of scripture and I cancel that vision from your life in the name of Jesus Christ no matter what you have seen no matter what you have heard if it's not consistent with what is written in the name of Jesus in partnership with the Spirit of God we declare it null and void and for every vision you have seen every vision you have heard every accurate vision that came from the Holy Spirit that came from heaven and is yet to be manifest I connect it to what is written I give it the life that makes it manifest in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice who is in error and has become an addict of visions an addict of the prophetic an addict of the apostolic above scripture I declare let there be deliverance for you now anyone who will have to depend on the prophetic or depend on visions for your confidence in the name of Jesus I rearrange the basis of your confidence let the basis of your confidence not just be visionary experiences but let it be these tripartite foundational encounters in the name of Jesus Christ hear me any pronouncement over your life whether through a dream through a vision or even through a man of God that is not consistent with scripture I stand by the ministry of the Holy Spirit and by that which is written I change it now concerning your life and every door that has refused to open the Bible mandates us to prophesy the Bible mandates us to declare restoration. The Bible mandates us to declare that doors be opened. Therefore, I stand by the authority of Scripture and I decree and declare every closed door opens now. Every closed door opens now. Hear me. For many of you, go back home. Listen to these scriptures or listen to this sermon. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.